It's kind of more defensible to read the Old Testament on its own, which Christians don't do, than to try to read the New Testament on its own, which is what Christians do do. Hi, I'm Rachel Bomberger with Erdman's Publishing. I'm here today with John Goldengay, who is the author of the new book, Reading Jesus' Bible, How the New Testament Helps Us Understand the Old Testament. Welcome, John. Thank you. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the book and what it does? Well, the subtitle, in a way, tells you um, the origin of the book was a discussion uh, between an editor at Erdman's and me about a, a book that would introduce people to the Old Testament. Mm. And um, uh, Matthew, the editor, uh, suggested that if I could start from the New Testament, that would be a good idea because that's what people are already familiar with um, and that might help them to get into it. Uh, and that did actually gel with an idea that I'd had in another connection, in connection with noticing that there were various ways in which, in particular, the beginning of Matthew's Gospel gives you different ways of handling the Old Testament, relating to the Old Testament. Uh, and so I suggested a book that worked kind of like that mm. and some more wise editors at Erdman said yeah but don't give them the impression this is a, this is a peculiar thing of Matthews um, can you look more broadly at the way the New Testament uses the Old Testament and use it that way um, so that's what I ended up doing and it was a really helpful uh, suggestion so um, what uh, what the book does then is look at um, Matthew but also Paul especially in Romans uh, and Hebrews and Luke and Acts, various parts of the Old Testament of the New Testament, which um, particularly uh, have a lot to do with the Old Testament. Talk a lot about it, mm. uh, looking at what they do with it and what kind of thing that they find in it. Uh, and so there are some chapters looking at various things that they do with the Old Testament, which I then use as uh, a jumping-off ground for saying, okay, in light of that. Here's the nature of the Old Testament. Go and read the Old Testament. Okay, if you believe in the New Testament, that shows you should go and read the Old Testament, doesn't it? And shows you a bit about how to do it too. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the, the title alludes to one of the basic premises of this book, and that is that for Jesus, for his disciples, for the writers of, of the New Testament, they didn't have the New Testament. I know, it's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they had the Bible. They had, yeah, they had the Bible, which is what we call the Old Testament. That's yes. right, yeah. Mm. <laughs> what do we lose when we lose sight of that reality? Oh, well, uh, you should read the book in order to find out. Of course. Um, but, I mean, for instance, uh, the, the way the book starts, uh, in accordance with the way that Matthew starts, uh, is with the fact that the Old Testament tells you the beginning of the story, of which the Gospel story is then the end, the climax. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you try to, uh, if you go to the theatre and you showed up halfway and only saw Act 2 and didn't see Act 1, you wouldn't understand Act 2 really, would you? Not uh, at all. And so um, the idea is, so, so one answer to the question is, you need to understand Act 1 of this story, of this gospel story, for you to understand Act 2. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to um, see, for instance, that the, the New Testament presupposes understandings of God and Israel and what it means to relate to God and so on. It doesn't keep telling you about the answers to those questions because it knows, or it thinks it knows, that the people of whom it's writing know that already. Mm -hmm. But of course we don't and so we miss out on the things that it takes for granted. And I, I take it that this, this reading the Testaments together isn't something <coughs> that just goes one way. It goes both ways, doesn't it? And that each uh, Reading, reading the New Testament helps us understand the Old Testament. Reading the Old Testament helps us understand the New Testament. Right, yeah, yeah. Though, though in a strange way, uh, I'm inclined to argue, uh, it's okay to read the Old Testament on its own because at one stage, for quite a long time, that was the Bible. So it must have been okay for people. They could know about God from it. Uh, it's, it's kind of more defensible to read the Old Testament on its own, which Christians don't do, than to try to read the New Testament on its own, which is what Christians do do. So you look at all across the New Testament, but especially looking at Matthew, because... Well, no, in the end, that was my original idea. Oh, that was your original but idea. But in light of what the editors said, mm -hmm. it looks pretty equally, really, at Matthew uh, and Luke Acts uh, and Romans and Hebrews are the main foci of it. A bit, a bit, revela a bit of revelation, but I didn't spend too much time on revelation because that's so hard to understand. <laughs> it is. 
And you point in the book to five ways, five yeah. clues yep. uh, that you can take from the New Testament and understanding the Old Testament. What are some of those ways? Oh, thank you for saying some of them, because then if I don't remember all five, that won't be too bad, <laughs> will it? Uh, it starts from the fact that, the, uh, that where Matthew starts in terms of presupposing a story, because Matthew starts with the, the genealogies, which look very boring to us. Um, but I once met somebody who got converted through the first 17 verses of Matthew's Gospel, the genealogies, and that was because she was Jewish. Mm. Uh, and that was what brought home to her that Jesus was her Messiah. Uh, that was, that's Matthew's way of summarizing the Old Testament story. Uh, so um, seeing the Old Testament story and the, New, and the New Testament story together helps you to grasp the whole. Mm. Uh, the thing that, the aspect of the, all this that we're more familiar with um, is that Matthew then goes on to talk about the way in which Jesus is the fulfillment of God's promises in the Old Testament. Um, and so you learn from the Old Testament the nature of the, the purpose that God had got, the promises that God made, uh, and the way in which they are fulfilled in an interim way anyway mm -hmm. in Jesus. Uh, the, you get then uh, in, Math in Matthew's Gospel uh, the story of Jesus' baptism and John the Baptist's ministry, uh, which presuppose in general terms uh, an understanding of who God is and what it means to be his people and so on. Mm. But also, particularly strikingly, I think, when Jesus is baptized, um, God speaks to him from the heavens uh, and speaks in words that come from these already existent scriptures. God speaking to Jesus doesn't make up some words for the occasion, which he'd have thought he'd do. Instead, he quotes from his book. Uh, and so an understanding, again, of um, the nature of God's truth uh, emerges for God and for Jesus from the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, then, the, um, then Matthew goes into the account of Jesus' temptation in, in the wilderness when uh, this funny character appears to Jesus, and each time Jesus responds to his clever suggestions by saying, it is written, and uh, reminds uh, the devil and us uh, that the shaping of uh, how to live uh, in, in relation to God comes from the, those scriptures. And then Je Jesus goes on in the Sermon on the Mount to talk about spirituality and about ethics. Uh, and uh, through there is um, talking about the nature of a relationship with God and what it means to be a believer uh, and what it means to live the right kind of life, all um, presupposing that he is building on what's in those scriptures already. So that's the, that's the way it works in Matthew, and in the book I try to show how that's how it works actually uh, in Romans and Hebrews and in Revelation and in Luke and so on as well. Indeed. In light of all of this, why do you think uh, the Old Testament gets so much less attention in the church, uh, even <coughs> though it's obviously foundational mm -hmm. for us? Uh, I, I guess one reason is that, of course, it is the case that Jesus is the centre of our faith. Jesus is the one who came to die uh, right. and to rise again from the dead for us. Uh, so that's one uh, answer. Um, I think another not so good answer is that the trouble with both the Old Testament and the New Testament is that they are complicated. Not just that they're written in strange languages or anything like that, but they give a, a very complex and therefore rich understanding of what, who God is. Uh, and who we are and what life is about and so on. Uh, and we'd rather things were simple than, than that they were complex and rich. Uh, and so people can uh, uh, simplify down. For instance, truth about God. Well, we all know that the God of the Old Testament is a nasty God of wrath <laughs> and the God of the New Testament is a God of love. Well, no, neither of those things are true <laughs> because God in the Old Testament and the New Testament is both somebody who is centrally love and faithfulness and mercy, but he's also somebody who's prepared to take a tough line when necessary, and that that's true about Jesus as well. But that if you can antithesize the Old Testament and the New Testament uh, in that kind of way, or by saying the Old Testament is a book of law, um, uh, is a religion of law, and the New Testament is a religion of uh, freedom and love, then again you've simplified things down in a way that is actually um, terribly misleading, uh, but also made your life easier. How do you hope that this book will be used? And what do you hope that people take away from it? Well, I, I hope they will... Oh, let me tell you a story. Uh, I, um, I used some of the... Oh, I, was, I was getting students. I, I, I get students to read through uh, 
uh, Romans uh, in, conne in, in connection with what it does with the Old Testament in a course on biblical interpretation. And I think I've more than once had a student come back and say, or say in a paper, I never realised Romans uses, used the Old Testament as much as that. Uh, and if people pick up that fact that not only Romans, but those other books, the Old and the New Testament in general, does uh, take the Old Testament so seriously, uh, then maybe they will go and read it. That's what I want. I want them to go and read the Old Testament because I think it's terrific. <laughs> well, I hope that they will. Thank you. Thank you, John, for speaking with us today. Okay. It's been wonderful talking with you. Thank you. The book again is Reading Jesus' Bible, How the New Testament Helps Us Understand the Old Testament.